So a couple years back, my buddies and I tried to stay in the park after closing time. Our plan was just to take pictures, nothing sinister or anything like that. We just wanted to be able to say we did it, you know? Basically, we snuck from bathroom to bathroom, corner to corner, and managed to stay there until they closed the gates and the maintenance team got to work. We were really surprised that we hadn't gotten caught. It was almost strange, considering how much talking up Disney security gets. Our hearts were beating like crazy, and we sat there for a while, hiding behind the tombstone by the Haunted Mansion. We noticed that it's true, the Disney staff had signed their names on every single one. So finally, we got the courage to roam about, still being careful as to not be seen. It was really eerie. The occasional guard or maintenance worker would walk by and we would just duck or hide behind a corner. It worked for about a half an hour. Of course, we couldn't keep this up for long, and yeah, they caught us. I mean, give us props for even attempting at and succeeding, but that's not where the story ends. So the first thing we said when they caught us was, are you going to take us to the dungeon? And we laughed. The security guard chuckled too, so the mood wasn't too dreary. He told us we weren't the first people to try to sneak in after hours, but he wanted to know how we did it. We explained the situation and he actually kind of laughed and said that wasn't a bad plan. He told us that he had to take us to the Disney jail to be fur further interrogated, which we thought was odd, but we figured from the beginning that if we had gotten caught, that he would take us down there. It might have been our plan all along. Maybe we wanted to see the Disney catacombs more than we wanted to be in the park after hours. So we called up for more workers to come and help him escort us. And we went on our way towards Toontown. Then they took us down in this elevator right into hell. The first thing we noticed was how expensive looking the elevator was. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's hard to explain. It was like a stainless steel interior with mares all around. And the floor was this tacky red carpeting. But it looked expensive. There were only two buttons in this elevator, not counting the emergency buttons. One set up and the other set down. I had forgotten to mention that they never handcuffed us or zip-tied our hands. They just kind of walked beside us, expecting we'd follow. Not that we would have tried to make a run off for... Not that we would have tried to make a run for it. I mean, these people seem decent. Like, how were we supposed to know what was going to happen? The elevator stopped, and we started walking down this perfectly shining, bleach-smelling corridor. There were no doors on either side. It was just a plain, empty corridor. We walked for what seemed like an eternity, and no one was talking any longer. It was me, my friends, the security guard, and two other maintenance workers. Finally, we reached a heavy metal door that had a security code and a card reader. One worker put his card in. The other typed a code on the keypad. I watched the code he typed in. 121566. I only remember it because I found out later what its significance was, and it makes me laugh looking back. Strange. It's strange that I could laugh looking back. They led me and my friends into another corridor. This one had doors down the hallway walls. Each door had a little plexiglass square, a 10 by 10 inch window at the top right corner. Looked sort of like a psych ward to be honest. Not so much like a jail. He led us to room 1901. 
and inside was a single desk with surprisingly three chairs for me and each of my friends. Then they left us in there alone, closing the door on the way out. We sat in the chairs like obedient little children and waited for them to return, but they never did. Two hours went by and no one came back for us. My buddy Tim went to the door and surprisingly, it was unlocked. He didn't open it though. He was worried there would be a guard on the other side and that they'd think we were escaping and we weren't looking for any more trouble. So about 25 minutes went by and when we got restless and finally decided to, and finally decided to leave the room. The hallway was empty like before. No signs of people. Nothing. We started calling out. Hello? Is anybody there? No one answered our calls. We noticed surveillance cameras were placed above every door, and we got to wondering if there was any living soul in this place at all. We should have left right then and there, but then again, whoever does the right thing in these kind of situations. Every door looked the same, and each one had a significant number above it. They weren't in order, like, say, rooms 1 to 10. They were all scattered numbers. For example, our room was 1901, but the door next to it was 1205. We got to thinking and finally assumed they were just randomly <laughs> chosen. We walked up the hallway and had no idea where we were going, what we were hoping to find, or even if it mattered. My other buddy, Guy, decided we should just leave. He said that if they really wanted us here, they'd have, they'd have come back and maybe it was just a scare tactic. Maybe they just wanted to trick us into thinking we were being arrested and were waiting for us outside to laugh. I felt weary of the whole situation, and Tim was just quiet the whole time, nodding his head here and there. He was more interested in looking into the doors, little 10 by 10 inch windows. That wasn't a good idea. I tried to tell him, but of course, no one listens to reason when they're freaked out. And we're definitely freaked the fuck out at this point. The cameras above the doors were capable of motion detection and followed us as we wandered down the desolate corridor, a little red light at the bottom of the lens blinking each second. No noise filled the air. All we heard was each other breathing. Then it happened. We reached the end of the hallway. Unfortunately, the door at the end had another pin code reader. I tried to enter the pin from before the one I saw them type in, but it was invalid. At that moment, the lights in the hallway shut off, and we heard the doors. God damn it, I can still hear them to this day. The fucking doors opened, all lining up along the corridor. They made a subtle creak, and then a boom as they hit the wall beside them with force. As I said, after I entered the invalid code, into the keypad, the lights shut off and the doors opened, except for the door with the keypad. We also noticed as the doors opened, each doorway had a little bit of light seeping out from its open pathway. We stood there stunned for a good five minutes, not knowing what to do. We figured we tripped some alarm and that this was just some protocol, a standard drill in case of an attempt to escape. What were we supposed to think? So we turned on, so we turned the other direction, away from the locked door. A sense of panic hit all three of us for some reason, and we got the urge to run. No one agreed to running. It was like we all knew we had to at some, at the same time, some sort of instinct, like a baby gazelle knowing when to run from a lion. We were in a lion's den, all right. It wasn't until about the 10th door we passed that we began to look into the doorways as we passed them 
Standing at the doorways were people in costume. We were running past Donald's, Mickey's, Goofy's, Pluto's. Pluto's and all different kinds of Disney characters. It was insane, and we screamed at the top of our lungs. I know they say never to look behind you as you run, but I did. They were leaving their rooms and following us. Not running, just casually walking towards us. I think that this is what made it that much more terrifying. Almost like they knew we had nowhere to go. Now, I don't know if it was all in my head. Just some sheer panic and fear at the moment. But I swear, I could swear on my mother's life. I heard It's a Small World playing over the intercom. I have a fear of dolls. And the ride always gave me the creeps my whole life. Now I could see them, the little robotic dolls standing in the doorway as we passed, still following, were the costume characters. The dolls weren't chasing us. Oh, thank God. I would have died from a heart attack if I had seen the dolls following suit, but they didn't. It didn't make the situation all that better. I mean, how many times have you been followed by a group of costume individuals seemingly out to fucking eat you alive? At least that's what I kept telling myself to keep myself moving. Stopping meant de being devoured by fucking Donald Duck? <laughs> I don't want to go out that way, but, you know, I'd rather not go out that way. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go out like that. Tim was crying. Guy was sweating and breathing heavily, and I just kept turning my head to see if we were being followed, and of course we were. I'm not sure how many doors we passed at this point, or if there were really different characters at each door, but I knew that this hallway had to end at some point, and we were getting the fuck out of this place pronto. Easier said than done. I looked back after another minute or two running and noticed there was nothing behind us anymore. I noticed there was nothing behind us anymore that we could see. I heard footsteps, but figured we had gotten so far ahead that they were still walking casually like before. The hallway was still going on for what seemed like forever, and Guy never stopped, needed to stop, or... And Guy needed to stop, or he was going to faint from exhaustion. The door behind us was open, with the light on, but nothing inside. I decided we would hide in there till we caught our breath, and could continue onward. As we closed the door behind us, I noticed the room, 1966. Again, that meant nothing at the time. Tim was pacing the room. Guy was laying on the floor, still breathing pretty hard. And I was at the window, looking out. I saw nothing. No more music. No nothing. It was dark out. And hard to tell for sure, but I figured I would have seen figures, shadows, or something. Still, I kept watch. After about 15 minutes or so, Guy said he was good to go. Tim was the only one smart enough to pull out his new Razor cell phone. No signal, of course. He opened the door, subtly, quietly, but heard no footsteps. Nothing was following us anymore, but we weren't taking any chances. We got back to running. It only took us another 17 minutes, another seven minutes to reach the door, give or take. It had no keypad, and it was open. We entered the corridor from before, and thank God there were no doors. We ran, from the, we ran for the elevator and got in, pushed the up button, and stood there looking at each other, dumbfounded as to what had just happened. None of us spoke. We just waited till the elevator opened back into Toontown and started making our way to the front gate. We kept a low profile using the same duck and hide technique that we that had gotten us this far from the get-go. Maintenance workers and security guard were still about, but we couldn't take any more chances. Finally, Tim lost it and took off in a sprint. 
I couldn't imagine what had set him off until I looked and saw that everyone in the park stood there staring at us with blank faces. We heard a voice over the intercom explaining that three fugitives had escaped from their captivity and needed to be escorted back to the jails below. We booked it, catching up to Tim. Costume characters appeared from the shadows, workers, guards chasing after us. Everyone was sprinting for us. I couldn't see well, but I imagined drool dripping from their jowls. They wanted us back down there. We had escaped, and they were pissed. The gate was just up ahead. The creepiest thing about it was that besides the voice over the intercom, the park was dead silent. No chat from the workers could be seen or heard. Even now, as we were running for what assumed was our lives, from the characters, the workers, the guards, no one bothered to shout out after us. And no one yelled. No one said, hey, stop. Nothing. Just footsteps and the occasional cough from Guy. As we made it past the park's front gate, we didn't stop until we got to the parking lot. Our car was gone. And we were left scratching our heads. We continued running down the road, which went on for miles, stopping occasionally for us to catch our breath. We made it to a little corner store, which Tim used his cell phone to call a taxi cab. When it finally arrived, we took the cab home back to the hotel we were staying at, paid the fare, and went up to our rooms. In the end, the next day, we got a call from the hotel's front desk, so we headed downstairs. There were four officers waiting for us. They said that our car had been impounded and we needed to pay the fine. They didn't ask us any other questions and we didn't bother telling the police anything that happened. Even now on this random board, people who don't have a reason to disbelieve me don't believe me. So how could an officer of the law be expected to? We didn't bother. We simply paid the fine and drove home. We didn't talk about what happened the whole drive back. It wasn't until a couple of weeks later I got myself to search up the numbers. Curiosity, I guess. As you all know, Walt Disney was born December 5th, 1901. The room we were in was 1901, and the door next to it was 1205. Also, he died December 15th, 1966, which was the key code the worker had put into who lead us into the main corridor. What a strange coincidence, I decided. Whether any of this was real at all, I couldn't tell you. Maybe our imaginations just ran wild. I mean, we were tired. It was around 1 a.m., when we made our escape. So, it's plausible that the answer, I'll never forget it though, and I haven't been back since. I don't think I ever will.